so in this short uh, review, I just want to go over codon degeneracy. So codon degeneracy is the fact that there are multiple codons for each amino acid, for or at least for many of those amino acids. So we can see here, for example, U C. UCU, UCC, UCA, UCG, those all code for serine. So that's codon degeneracy. And uh, you can see that with a lot of these different ones. And codon degeneracy usually happens in the third nucleotide. So the third nucleotide of a codon is where you can have a change and likely still have a silent mutation or unaffected protein. The other cool thing about the way our codons and the genetic code is organized is even if there is a mutation that isn't a silent mutation, it causes a change in amino acid, this is organized in such a way that it optimizes the chances that that is going to be a minor mutation. Now, of course, they're not all minor mutations, and many mutations do cause a major change in disease, but for example, let's take a look at this. We have our classes of amino acids here. We have the nonpolar guys, the polar, and then we have our acidic and our basic. If we take a look at some of the nonpolar ones, we can see that we have leucine and phenylalanine grouped here. We have another four codons for leucine right here. Then we have isoleucine right here and we have valine right over here. These are all nonpolar amino acids, isoleucine, leucine, valine. And so here, if we have a change, if we have, for example, the codon UUG, we can change the first nucleotide in that sequence to CUG and it's still leucine, another silent mutation. But even if we changed it to AUC, or sorry, if we had UUG, if we changed it to GUG, that's valine, and that still is a nonpolar amino acid. And so it's less likely to have a catastrophic effect on the fold and the function, and therefore this might be a conservative mutation where we have the substitution doesn't have a major effect.